An unusual incident was recently filmed in a field in the municipality of Benito Juarez in Argentina. One can see a mother cow standing over her newborn calf, which seems to be struggling with some kind of incredibly unlikely danger. The little armadillo seems to be attacking the calf, intentionally targeting the stomach. It's remarkable that earlier in the same field, they found three dead newborn calves with their entrails hanging out. This strange discovery made many people wonder why an armadillo would do such a thing in the first place. To get to the bottom of things, we need to understand what we're dealing with here. Armadillos are small mammals that boast powerful limbs and large claws. These claws are usually used for digging and searching for food. They're omnivorous creatures, which means they don't mind eating anything from small vertebrates, insects, and larvae to plants and certain fruits. Armadillos are also known to feed on carrion. But the calves were still alive. The armadillos who killed the calves were probably trying to defend their territory. As you know, they marked their homes with urine, feces, and excretions of scent glands, so the calves could have just found themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time. Also, male armadillos can become aggressive, trying to keep their rivals away from potential females during mating season. It might seem to us it's hard to mistake a calf for another armadillo, but no one knows how armadillos see the situation. Especially since it's not the first time when armadillos attacked animals that can't possibly compete with them for females. And it's not just calves. A couple of years ago, a video emerged on the internet showing an armadillo first biting and clawing a small lamb by its neck, then grabbing it by the ear and trying to drag it away. No one knows what would have happened next if the farmer hadn't intervened. This behavior seems odd because most people don't even realize that large armadillos can and will attack animals this big. There are observations of armadillo attacks on deer, fawns, and even a rhea, a flightless bird which looks like an ostrich. In both cases, armadillos tried to drag these animals away into their burrows. By the way, some believe that armadillos might act like that due to their poor eyesight. They rely on their sense of smell and hearing to target their prey and then bite the most vulnerable parts of the body, like ears and noses. Can you tell if it's a lamb's ear by the smell alone? I'm not sure. Nature's blessed armadillos with impressive weapons which they use to attack virtually anyone. The giant armadillo native to South America is known for its large claws, which it uses to dig out food. Although these animals are usually not aggressive, if they sense a real threat, they'll defend themselves and do so very successfully. Just think about it. With a body length of about 3.2 feet, its largest claw can grow up to 9 inches long, making armadillos the animals with the longest claw-to-body ratio among living animals. If humans had the same proportions as armadillos, our nails would be over 12 inches long. Just imagine how long it would take Steve to write the script then. In addition to their impressive claws, armadillos are known for their strong carapace, which protects them from predators and other dangers. The carapace consists of plates that cover most of the armadillo's body. The same carapace, by the way, can carry an unexpected risk to humans. When touched, the plates Ouch. curl up, so they can pinch your finger. So try not to touch armadillos with your bare hands. <laughs> but you know what's interesting? Sloths, which are related to armadillos, are also dangerous. Yeah, sloths. These weird and incredibly slow creatures can also be aggressive, and this applies more to two-toed sloths than to three-toed ones. Two-toed sloths are larger, stronger, and have more powerful claws, which they use to defend themselves when threatened or stressed. Therefore, they should always be handled with care. Professionals working with sloths stick to the following rules. Physical restraint must be gentle, but at the same time firm and performed by at least two people using leather gloves. Attempts to forcibly restrain a sloth are likely to be unsuccessful or even dangerous. It's not just the claws one should watch out for, but also the teeth. Yes, we're still talking about sloths. Ah. 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 But back to armadillos, which not only have the longest claws, they also have a whole bunch of teeth. The giant armadillo is a leader in the number of teeth among land mammals, boasting 80 to 100 teeth in its mouth. To some, this figure may not seem very impressive, especially when compared to sharks. The thing is, mammals are the least toothy creatures on Earth, and giant armadillos are an undisputed leader when it comes to tooth count. What else can armadillos boast of? 
Well, at least the fact that they're considered one of the oldest surviving groups of mammals. These animals have hardly changed their distinctive shape since they appeared, and this supposedly happened about 48 million years ago. In fact, the hard carapace of bone plates and long, thick claws seem to hint that they came straight out of the prehistoric era. Of course, as is common for extinct animals, ancient armadillos were much larger than modern individuals and were called glyptodonts. The largest of them could weigh up to two tons. And all ancient armadillos had a powerful mace-like spiked tail. Their outer carapace consisted of layered bone deposits inside the skin, similar to what we see in tortoises today. The last known specimen that went extinct at the end of the last ice age 12,000 years ago weighed about 1.5 tons. It was a direct relative of modern armadillos. It belonged to the same evolutionary group. Sort of like a very, very tough great-grandfather. Well, if for some reason you still doubt that armadillos can be very intimidating creatures, here's a fact for you. Not too long ago, scientists discovered strange giant tunnels. And yes, spoiler alert, these were the burrows of the ancient relatives of armadillos. Technically, of course, they were giant sloths, but they did have claws too. In 2010, Amokar Atomy with the Brazilian Geological Survey first investigated rumors of an impressive cave of unknown origin. To his surprise, inspection revealed the cave was not the result of any natural geological process. The researcher had been to other caves nearby, formed by water, but they looked quite different. Upon a closer look, the scientists found claw marks on the ceiling. They were huge. Finding no natural geological explanation for how the cave came to be, he concluded that it was a burrow dug by an extinct animal. The tunnels must have been created at least 8,000 to 10,000 years ago when these creatures roamed South America in great numbers. The size of the burrows varies. One of them was about 1,000 feet long, and another burrow is said to have been over 3,000 feet long. So if you ever come across a mysterious burrow or tunnel in your backyard, be careful. What if it was made by a giant sloth or an ancient armadillo that forgot to go extinct? The natural tendency of armadillos to dig can create a cave not only somewhere far from the city, but also right under your house. Of course, it'll be smaller because these animals aren't as big as they used to be in prehistoric times, but... Their digging's been found to undermine foundations, concrete slabs, driveways, pools, and other structures. Digging near walls and foundations is especially dangerous because it compromises the integrity of the building. Yes, in theory, an armadillo could be the cause of a house collapse. These animals have also been known to weaken dams along rivers and streams, digging long tunnels that are used as escape routes or nests. This can lead to costly restoration or repair work if timely measures aren't enforced. Naturally, with such a strong urge to dig everywhere they can, the armadillos couldn't miss cemeteries. Because of this, people even started thinking armadillos were digging up graves to eat the corpses. But don't panic just yet. Even though armadillos tend to eat carrion, they won't actively dig up dead people to do so. In fact, it's easier for the animals to dig where the ground is soft, such as in a freshly filled grave. And all they're looking for there is insects. Nevertheless, as you've already realized, armadillos can be a source of real problems and pose a real threat to people. The armadillo problem in Sapphire, North Carolina became so serious that a specialist was needed to fix it. Homeowners were outraged when these mammals began tearing up their lawns and they hired a man as an armadillo bounty hunter, quite literally. He was offered $100 for each dead carcass he produced. However, the armadillos did so much damage that the hunter started working on a retainer. He prowls around the properties at night armed with a rifle, but claims it's like hunting aliens. It's really hard to catch and kill an armadillo. The standard 22 rifles used on armadillos don't seem to kill them immediately. One day the animal was shot, but it still managed to hop and run away. Also, it's easy to mistake armadillos for garbage or rocks at night because their body absorbs light and their eyes don't reflect it. As I said, armadillos have poor eyesight, but a keen sense of hearing, so the hunter has to use a heat-sensing scope to pick up warm body areas he can sneak up on. In addition, hunting can be dangerous for humans. Bullets have been known to ricochet off armadillo's armor and hit shooters. And once, an armadillo almost killed actor Morgan Freeman. Not because he was trying to hunt the animal, of course. In 2015, Morgan Freeman was flying to Texas for filming, and his private jet hit an armadillo during takeoff at high speed. 
The collision first blew the plane's tires and then severed the hydraulic line. Thankfully, the pilot quickly realized what had happened and alerted spotters on the ground to how serious the damage was. When officials discovered signs of the accident on the runway, it was decided to proceed with an emergency landing. Air traffic controllers sent Freeman's plane to Tunica because it has a long runway that would have been necessary for a safe landing if the aircraft's brakes were non-functional. First, the pilot, who by the way acted in a super professional manner, was burning off fuel to reduce the likelihood of fire on landing. Unfortunately, during this very landing, Freeman's plane skidded off the runway before stopping. No one was injured, well, except for the plane. What happened to the armadillo that caused the incident is unknown. Although in general, this situation's not that unique or even unusual. In the United States alone, a total of 86,000 wildlife strikes have been reported in the last decade. Planes have hit bats, coyotes, raccoons, skunks, opossums, desert hares, prairie dogs, cats, dogs, foxes, bull snakes, turtles, armadillos, alligators. What alligators, Steve? You gotta be kidding me. Well, there were alligators, badgers, at least one woodchuck, an elk, and several rather ominous sounding unknown terrestrial mammals. There are even databases on collisions with deer and bald eagles in various states, and they're pretty, let's just say, depressing. The good news is that the likelihood of human injury or death from such a collision is low. Over the 23-year period between 1990 and 2013, only 25 people were killed in aircraft wildlife strikes. That number is relatively small when you consider that in the U.S., there are about 50,000 takeoffs and landings every day in all airports. Moreover, many birds fly through the airspace every day, so some of them will inevitably collide with airplanes. That's just the way life is. Many airports try to keep the animals away from runways, they build walls, use special pulsating lights and certain sounds to scare off birds, so I think you shouldn't be afraid. Though to be honest, after today's video, I'll never look at armadillos the same way again. See you later.